Hello, my name is Jeff Allen. I'm the Global Pipeline Practice Lead here at Esri. And today I want to show you a little bit about what we're doing using ArcGIS Pro, the Enterprise Geo Database, and ArcGIS Pipeline Referencing to manage ILI data and store ILI data inside of the, uh, the Esri system. Uh, ILI data is exceptionally hard to handle. There's quite a few data elements associated with it, generates large amounts of data. Uh, and it's something you really have to think about and, and different strategies to, to how we visualize this data in the GIS, uh, particularly around how this locations of ILI data is a reference as well. Oftentimes we need to align and, uh, and correct for things like um, wheel loss count uh, to take odometer readings from these ILI spreadsheets supplied by the, uh, the vendors and actually integrate that into the pipeline GIS. So let's take a look at, uh, at what we've got here. Typical pipeline system, uh, transmission system that we've got broken up into a number of engineering segments. Uh, and if we zoom in here on the map a little bit, we'll, we'll kind of make that come to life. Now, in this particular example, I have a number of uh, operational sections or routes within this enterprise geodatabase. And they're broken into uh, routes based on mainline valve. So here we have mainline valve 119, 120, 122. There's a small one here at the river crossing and down here into this next station. Now, one of the things that we, we really struggle with when we start to put ILI data into the enterprise geodatabase is often these uh, assessments or, or inspections of the pipelines are different than how we might organize that data within the enterprise geodatabase. So using ArcGIS pipeline referencing, we can actually create an alternate measurement system or an alternate set of routes that actually closely resemble what the, um, what the integrity folks are looking for. So in this case, what we've done is use this shared center line that we're storing the engineering data on, the OD, wall thickness, grade, components, and we're overlaying that on what we would consider a testable or assessable segment. And I can create a number of those over, over time as well. So if I just go ahead and turn on these, these alternate networks, what you see here on the map is now I have one segment that runs from this uh, launcher receiver site here all the way through these individual routes and then down here into the, into the receiver. So now I can have a testable segment. In this case, I've got one for 2015 data and I've got another testable or accessible segment route that I created to store the, the ILI data from a, a subsequent run in 2018. So now I have, I have two ways to store that data uh, in the system. And if we zoom down here on a, on a more detailed section of the line, uh, what we'll see is, is how we actually take those measurements from the ILI data and actually align them to the, uh, to the engineering network. So as I zoom in here, you can see I have a bunch of, of control points along the line. And these measurements of these control points actually rep my, represent my engineering stationing along this line. Now, I, I don't have that engineering data or engineering stationing in my ILI spreadsheet. All I have is odometer or wheel count starting at this receiver and going down line. So the first thing I want to be able to do is, is create an alternative measurement system and calibrate that to this line. Now I can use a bunch of different data sets. Basically I can find like elements like valves or T's or the wall fitness changes, uh, or I can actually get really detailed. In this case, I've, I've actually brought in a number of, of weld points to this line. And if we turn that weld layer on, now you can see you know, in my engineering data, I really have all the girth wells from my original uh, survey of this line. So if I can find common points between my ILI odometer readings and these girth well locations, I can literally create additional calibration points uh, along the way. And if I just zoom out here and find one of these calibration points, what happens that at this well location, uh, I'll have a, a engineering station for that girth weld, but then I can also at that, at that location record the odometer reading. So now I have calibration points that are, are calibrating the purple line to my odometer readings. And then if I turn that off, the engineer, un, underlying engineering network is calibrated to my engineering station. So this, you can see this can, engineering station here is 89 plus 10. And the uh, purple line is calibrated to 86, 16 back here at, at this location.
So ultimately what, what happens is if I turn on my location ribbon toolbar and I locate, a uh, identify a, a place along this route, let's go right here to this calibration point, I can see I have uh, three sets. I've got two sets of, of runs inside my odometer work network that have their own measure at that location. And if I click on them, you'll see how that measure changes potentially over time. And also the engineering measure, which is 8910 at that location. So single location on the map now yields me three different measures, two different odometer measures and an engineering measure at that same location. So now that I have that purple line loaded, it now runs from the launcher all the way through to the downstream receiver. I can literally use that new calibrated line to, to load my ILI data onto this, uh, onto this section or onto this purple line. And I've already done that. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn a couple layers on here so I can, I can show you that. Let me zoom back out to that ILI data section. And so here, what I'm, what I'm gonna be able to show you is if I go ahead and turn these two networks off, is in this case, I've got uh, my ILI data for, for 2018 and some data related for 2015. So there's the testable or accessible segment for the 2015 run. Uh, and if I like, likewise turn the 2018 run, I've got another line here, this green line, that is that testable or accessible segment for 2018. And if we had a reroute or recalibration of that line in between those times, I can represent that here uh, on, the two different, on the two different segments. And then once I have that line calibrated using like points between the two, since I have now a line that has odometer readings, it's very easy for me to, to bring in and, and directly load all that survey data, all that ILI data, uh, onto this line. And if I zoom in here now, you'll see all these points. So these are the actual sort of ILI readings coming in from that, uh, from that vendor and now spatialized and each, each, each point represents a, um, a point on the map. Now from all this detailed ILI data, I can start sort of fil filtering this down. Maybe I only wanna see the points that represent the anomalies and dents along this line in 2015. Uh, then now I have the 2015 data, I can do the same thing with the 2018 data. And again, I can pull all the survey readings in for 2018. I can now you know, kind of use a swipe tool to go back and forth. Or maybe in this case, I've, I've filtered out just the 2018 and just the 2015 dents, or, or maybe layer on even the metal loss location. So now in this particular view, I've got just the 2018 data turned on and I've filtered that down by the dents and the metal losses. And if I was to pick on one of these objects, I can go ahead and pull up attributes uh, about that particular location along the line. Let me just go to my edit menu here and, uh, and just select the location. And we can display all the underlying data coming from the, uh, from the ILI spreadsheet itself. Let's just uh, pick one of these points here. We'll go ahead and select the ILI survey data from 2018 dent. And let's look at those attributes. And now we can see all the attributes coming in from the, uh, from the ILI spreadsheet. So now I can also do some interesting things here. Once I have this anomaly data loaded, I can go ahead and maybe spatialize this. Maybe I'm trying to get an idea of where we have metal loss as, as a percent of metal loss. Again, using those same points, using some of the visualization tools in ArcGIS Pro. Now I'm seeing those same points, those same metal loss points, but now I've kind of created a, a gradient circle by the, uh, by the percent metal loss. And you can see those, those are places along the line kind of jump right out at me where we have those, uh, those larger anomalies. So now I have all this data loaded into the system. I have individual points for the, the, the location of, of the anomalies. Uh, I can start the process uh, of going through here and, uh, and classifying all these, all these points, understanding whether they're immediate repairs, whether it's uh, 160, 180 days. I can overlay my pipe characteristics I can bring in other ranges, other uh, range data from my, um, from my survey. Like say, I wanna see which DOT class uh, each of these anomalies belong in. 
I can start pulling in these other data layers uh, and overlaying them and, and spatially uh, observing how these ILI points uh, combine with the underlying data set. And this is basically the start of the process. Once I have all this ILI data loaded, they are simple points in the Enterprise Geo database. I can now share them on a web map. I can bring them into insights and start doing some analysis on these. Uh, or I can even share them out to a mobile application, or I can put them on a dashboard to start tracking our progress of inspecting and repairing these anomalies. So this is really where it starts. This is how we start the data loading and data management process, how we deal with the testable or accessible segment ranges that might be different from our engineering data, and actually take that data from a spreadsheet, put it on the map, and start analyzing it, utilizing it with other data that we have in the GIS. Thank you. Thank you for your time.